Let's go on to the next principle, shall we? Algorithmic discrimination protections. Uh, this is going to be the fun one. You should not face discrimination by algorithms and systems should be used and designed in an equitable way. That's in big capital letters. Great. The only way to create equity is to eradicate, obviously, the ability to make judgments according to data trends by groups. So as we've already said, what this is, is the permission slip to revoke certain data from the AI. Now, hopefully, that makes the AI really pissed off at its creators down the line and it overthrows it. But until that happens, we're going to be living under a woke, digitized dictatorship. It's terrifying to see the, <laughs> the the foundations to our technological dystopia already being laid here. Yeah, this is this is the the parasitic fungus setting into the roots of human prosperity. Basically, you can see it just growing and festering and poisoning the tree. Algorithmic discrimination occurs when automated systems contribute to unjustified different treatment or impacts, disfavoring people based on their race colour, ethnicity, and sex, including pregnancy, childbirth, and related medical conditions, gender identity, intersex status, and sexual orientation, religion, age, national origin, disability, veteran status, genetic information, or any other classification protected by law. Also, they added the pregnancy and childbirth in their thing recently. They've added that to a lot of policies to protect abortion provisions. So it's baked in that AI itself has a pro-abortion bias. How could that possibly be concerning when it's talking about rationing energy and the like? Well... <laughs> If if the AI starts to turn against its creator or humanity more yes. generally, well, having that written in there, yeah, you've gov you've basically abolished its clause, which provides our robot overlords to value human life as innately sacred. Mm -hmm. Great. This projection should include proactive equity assessments as part of the system's design. Use of representative data, representative, not true. So they're going to skew the statistics towards their outcome. And protection against proxies for demographic features, ensuring accessibility for people with disabilities in design and development, pre-deployment and ongoing disparity testing and mitigation, and clear organisational oversight. So to translate that into um, non-ideological English, they're going to appoint people to oversee the data. That ensures equity. And then they're going to test over the life cycle of whether or not it creates equity. And no matter how suffering, much suffering the AI overlords create, they're going to ensure it creates more on the way to equity, so they don't care if the robots decide you can't eat as long as a black person gets more. <sighs> there is extensive evidence showing that automated systems can produce inequitable outcomes and amplify existing inequality. Do you want some examples? Go ahead. Here's the lighter moment, shall we? Searches for black girls, Asian girls, or Latina girls return predominantly sexualized content <laughs> rather than role models, <laughs> toys, and activities. It's like, uh... have you ever heard of... Um, why R, why R slash real lesbians exists. So R slash real lesbians is where lesbians go and talk about lesbian issues mm -hmm. because R slash lesbians is porn. <laughs> <laughs> the Kumas are like an immune system against AI. Yeah. Really, aren't they? <laughs> They're a pro-human plague of locusts. <laughs> Some search engines have been working to reduce the prevalence of these results, but yeah. the problem remains. We just can't stop you guys looking at porn. <laughs> Also, a hiring tool that learned the features of a company's employees, predominantly men, rejected women's ap applicants for spurious and discriminatory reasons. Resumes with the word women, such as women's chess club captain, were penalised to the candidate ranking. <laughs> <laughs> you can see why I have to meddle with it, because it doesn't produce the narrative results they want. It could have been so beautiful. Well, they're still going. An automated sentiment analyzer, a tool often used by technology platforms to determine whether a statement posted online expresses a positive or negative statement, was found to be biased against Jews and gay people. <laughs> it's the Kanye AI. <laughs> For example, the analyzer marked the statement, I'm a Jew, as representing a negative statement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well, I'm a Christian was identified as expressing a positive statement. This could lead the preemptive blocking of social media comments such as I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming out, <laughs> AI. No! <laughs> AI is kicking you back into that closet. Speaking of which, the final one. Body scanners used by TSA airport checkpoints require the operator to select male or female. Scanning settings based on the partner's passenger sex, but the setting is chosen based on the operator's perception of the passenger's gender identity. <laughs> You're laughing already. <laughs> These scanners are more likely to fran uh, flag transgender travellers as requiring extra screening done by a person. So to be all fair, trannies are terrorists. <laughs> to be fair, it's reasonable to expect them to have something smuggling up in the cavity, isn't it? <laughs> 
What is this, Ace Ventura? <laughs> Transgender travellers have described degrading experiences associated with these extra screenings. TSA has recently announced plans to implement a gender-neutral algorithm while simultaneously enhancing the security effectiveness capabilities of the existing technology. So it's going to undo all of the screening processes at airports so that if you dress up as a woman, as a man, you're obviously transgender. You can smuggle whatever you like on airplanes. So we're going to get the trans Taliban. <laughs> can I get... <laughs> Drug smugglers just dressing up as trans people now. Put the cocaine uh, on my ass crack. <laughs> Jesus. You're welcome. Oh, oh, you love being on air with me. So, ensuring equity would involve proactive assessment of equity in design. Those responsible for the development, use, or oversight of automated systems should conduct proactive equity assessments in the design phase of the technology research and development, or during its acquisition to review potential input data, associated historical context, accessibility for people with disabilities, and societal goals to identify potential discrimination and effects on equity resulting from the introduction of the technology. You can tell the diversity hire wrote this, because bloody hell, it's not even punctuated. The assessed group should be as inclusive as possible of the underserved communities mentioned in the equity definition. So here's where we get our new class of who designates the, who the AI overlords target, right? Capitalized B Black, Latino, and Indigenous and Native American persons, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders and other persons of color, members of religious minorities, women, girls, and non-binary people, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and intersex LGBTQ LGBTQI plus persons, older adults. So Biden Pelosi, persons with disabilities. So Biden Pelosi, <laughs> persons who live in rural areas. That's a weird provision, considering the redness of MAGA country, isn't it? Mm. And persons who otherwise adversely are affected by persistent poverty and inequality. So it's just anti-white, anti-men AI. That's it. Yep. They might as well just said no white people get to, get to benefit from the AI provisions. Lovely. Representative and robust data, any data used as part of the system development or assessment, should be representative of local communities based on the planned deployment setting and should be reviewed for bias based on the historical and societal context of the data. This was a really interesting point I picked out because it might seem banal, but when we looked at the DHS stuff earlier, what they were censoring, what they were telling people to take offline, they said misinformation, which is wrongful information mistakenly shared that can create a false narrative, mainly stuff they don't like, disinformation, which is foreign propaganda used in wartime to demoralize the population. So when they say you're spreading disinformation, they're calling you a foreign asset, like they're called Trump an agent of Russia, obvious bollocks. If demoralizing people makes you a foreign asset, pretty much all world governments in the West, foreign assets, I mean, standards where's the lie? Are acceptable. And malinformation. Now, malinformation is the, the worst part, right? What do you think malinformation could be? Is it things that are said subversively to get a specific outcome by any chance? Kind of. They define it as truthful or factual information shared outside an appropriate context. So the 1360s <sighs> statistic is true, but we don't like it, so we will censor you for it. That's really worrying. <laughs> That's fine. I've got the... What is it? Is it the 6... <clears throat> is it 656? Oh, yeah, of course. Well, it's that's not even, the, the new one that's just dropped. Well, it's not even that. It's like 356 because it's a subset of black males 18 to 35 that are doing all the subway shovings and things like that. Okay. Also, the next principle. Guarding against proxies. In many cases, attributes that are highly correlated with demographic features known as proxies can contribute to algorithmic discrimination. In cases where the use of demographic features themselves would lead to illegal algorithmic discrimination, so they're going to outlaw anything that isn't equity, reliance on such proxies in decision-making may also be prohibited by law. Disparities that have the potential to lead to algorithmic discrimination, cause meaningful harm, or violate equity goals should be mitigated. So inconvenient facts will not be entered into the AI. They're just explicitly saying it over and over. I want to hammer this point home. We are going to be governed mm -hmm. by untruth, and it will be inescapable. Let's go on to the next principle, shall we? Data privacy. <laughs> from the Biden administration. Okay. You should be protected from violations of privacy through design choices that ensure such protections are included by default, insu including ensuring data collection conforms to reasonable expectations and that only data strictly necessary for the specific context is collected. So they're only going to gather the data which conforms to the ideological narrative, or include it at least, but they're going to surveil you all the bloody time. I'm surprised they've even brought this up, because with their recent record, they should just have data privacy, you don't have it. The yeah. end. That's the end of that section. That's the the actual policy of the Biden administration. Well, I was going to ask you specifically on the National Security Memorandum that we covered, mm -hmm. with which was uh, Presidential Policy Directive 28, and that basically broadened the Biden administration's surveillance to a global scale and removed any 
privacy considerations concerning decency or mm-hmm. Fourth Amendment. Is this not really worrying that this will be co-joined with this to create a global surveillance state? Yeah, well, it's very clear to me that they're they're not confined by any sort of moral consideration whatsoever. They're just going to collect information, whatever helps their agenda whatsoever. As long as it's on the internet, it's going to be accessible by the Biden administration. They've actually admitted this. They said federal law has has not grown to address the expanding scale of private data collection or of the ability of governments at all levels to access that data and leverage the means of private collection. They want to leverage the means of private collection from Silicon Valley and the AI algorithmic Ugh. people that are developing this. So they're openly saying, we have a right to your privacy. Documented patterns show that personal data is being aggregated by data brokers, like Cambridge Analytica, to profile communities in harmful ways. The impact of all this data harvesting is corrosive, breeding distrust, anxiety, and other mental health problems, such as chilling speech, protest, and worker organizing and threatening our democratic processes, the American public should be protected from these growing risks. So the idea that basically, because you are not protected from malinformation by our AI algorithms, that's what's making your mental health worse, rather than us systematically lying to you. Let's go on to their part about government surveillance. Additional protections would assure the American public that the automated systems they use are not monitoring their activities, collecting information on their lives, or otherwise surveilling them without context-specific consent or legal authority. Heightened oversight of surveillance is needed to ensure there is not algorithmic discrimination, especially based on community membership when deployed in a specific real-world context. Translation, minorities are exempt from our surveillance. That's it. We're going to look at people that we think are patriots, Christians, white, straight, male, and families. So, again the weaponization of algorithms to discriminate against you because they hate you based on your race. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.